Here I have a splay table that you saw in the previous video and it's filled with all the users from the database. So when I click on a user, it gets me to the edit user page. Let's take a look at the code. Here I've got my user controller with the edit method that just returns a few with the user. Then there is the update method that validates the request, updates the user, shows the toast and then redirects back to that user's table. In the edit template below the header, I'm gonna start writing my form. So let's start with the splayed form component and let's set the action to the update method that you saw in the user controller. So route user.update, then we give it the user and let's add a class to give the element some spacing. All right, let's start with the name input. I'm gonna use the splayed input component and then we set the name attribute to name. Close the element and then we close the form. And then when we switch to the browser, you can see that the input element, but it doesn't have default value yet. So normally what you would do is something like value and then echo out the name of the user. You would also probably wrap it in the old method so that the user input is not lost when the validation fails. But all of this is not necessary with splayed form components. In fact, you don't have to use the value attribute at all. Splate will take care of this. So what you need to do is bind the user model, the eloquent model, to the form with this default attribute. Let's see in the browser what happens. It retrieved the name attribute from the model. And then one other thing that I want to add is a label. We can do that with the label attribute, label name. And that's gonna give us a nice little label above the input element. I will duplicate this element and reuse it for the email field. And I'm also going to add a button to the form. This way we can send the form and I can show you that the validation works. So let's get rid of the email address and submit. And you can see that it resolves the validation errors and that the old data is still there. So let's paste the email back in, hit submit. And then you can see that the user has been updated. To prove that it really works, I'm going to change the name a little bit. And as you can see, it's now Graham with a single M. So what more can we do? Let's add a select element to this form. We can do that with the splayed select component. And for this select element, you don't have to render the options manually. Splayed takes care of that. So splayed select, and I give this a name of country code, label of country, and then I'm gonna give it the options, which is just a key value array of countries. And of course, I need to make sure in the user controller that this view has that countries array. Below the user, I'm going to add the countries key. And the user has a static method, country options, that returns a key value array with all countries in the world. So here I've got the select element and it's got all the options rendered. And the cool thing is with the select element is that it has built in support for the choices JavaScript library. And the only thing we have to do is at the choices attribute. Now the select element has a nice search field, so you can quickly search for a country. The library also has support for multiple select elements. So just by adding multiple, you can choose multiple countries. And this library comes with a default Tailwind styling, but like everything in Splate, you can fully customize it, even if you don't want to use Tailwind. So the next thing I want to show you is checkboxes. There's a dedicated checkbox component, which has a default value of one, but you can customize it. But for this demo, I'm gonna leave it at one because I'm creating a checkbox to agree with the terms. Now, this is a very simple example, but of course you can imagine sometimes you want multiple checkboxes for the same field. For example, if you want to select roles for a user. So let's see how we can do that. Let's create two checkboxes with a roles array and let's create one for an editor. And let's duplicate this line and change it to writer. Now, this looks a bit weird because of the spacing, but we can fix that later. But for now, let's add some validation to the user controller. So in the update method, I'm gonna add roles, which is gonna be required and should be an array. And let's set the minimum to two. Now, if we hit submit, you won't see the validation error. So let's fix that first. In the edit template, 
I'm going to wrap the checkboxes in a group component. With the group component, we can add a little label above the checkboxes. It fixes the validation and it also fixes the styling for the checkboxes inside the group. So let's refresh the page. And this already looks much better. So when I hit submit now, it shows the validation error and it also validates whether we have enough roles. You can add an inline attribute to the group component and now the checkboxes are rendered next to each other. Now, this is great, of course, but there is one other way to render multiple checkboxes. But first, let me go back to the user controller and give the edit template a roles array, which is a key value array, just like the countries options. So instead of grouping the checkboxes, there is a checkboxes component that behaves like the select component. So we can just use the name roles, we can set the label to roles, and then we can use the options that are imported in the user controller. So let's see what happens now. Here I've got my roles, the validation works. Let's see, yeah, works great. And you can even do the same for radio elements. So instead of checkboxes, we can change it to radios. And now of course, you can only select one role, but the component works just the same. So now we've got a nice group of radio elements rendered. Besides the choices library, there's also an integration with the flat picker library to pick dates and times. I'm going to add another input element and I set it to day of birth and the label as well. And the only thing I have to do is add the date attribute. And now we have a nice little date picker. Just like the other libraries, you can fully customize this one. And it also supports time picking. So just by adding the time attribute, it adds a time picker which by the way, you can also use without the date attribute. And you can even pick date ranges. So that works great as well. Let's select the whole month. All right. One other thing I want to show you is the text area component, because that has one little library integrated as well. Let's create a text area element and set it to biography. Add a label. And then we can add the auto size attribute. This will grow and shrink the text area automatically. So here I have my biography field. And then when I hit the next row, you can see that the height of the text area changes instead of showing a scroll bar. So that's it for the form components. There are many more options that you can find in the documentation. But now you've seen most of it in a quick overview. So thank you and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.